All right, so today we're going to take a quick look at what I've affectionately called the knitted violin. Now, this violin in its conception is part of a series of artworks that are conceptually driven through the use of the instrument as a container. And so I have uh, two so far in this series with many more kind of streaming out of my head um, and hopefully out of my hands. But the first of that was the rabbit pochette, which had the stuffing of a stuffed animal rabbit inside of it. Um, that was then played between a daughter and a father. And after that experience, the rabbit stuffing was taken out and put in, into or put into a uh, back to the stuffed animal. And so that stuffed animal holds the kind of experience and conversation of them playing and what they kind of experienced. And so I like this idea of, of the way that we create heirlooms or create objects that hold story and history um, and all of those things. And so I often talk about my grandfather, how I carry his pocket knife and how if it was somebody else's pocket knife, I wouldn't care about it as much. But because he carried it, it carries some part of him, right? And we all experience that in our lives in some way or the other. How we put, uh, we use objects as containers. And so I started thinking about how specifically violins are containers. They're a box in, in a way. And so uh, this one was full of yarn. It's no longer full of yarn. And this was a real interesting challenge for me, uh, conceptually but also physically, to make a violin and glue it all up and make it function completely packed the brim with yarn. And the whole idea was that yarn was going to flow out of the F holes as someone was playing it. That's kind of what I kind of saw in my vision here. And originally I thought someone might be knitting it as it came out, but then I or crocheting it or something. And then I realized that would take forever. So I succumbed to the idea that I would have people actually just pulling it out and kind of drawing it. And then whatever that yarn is made into, or just as a raw material, kind of holds the history of being inside of here and holds the history of that vibration. We see music kind of as a line or a thread, and um, it's kind of being drawn out at the same time as the music, so it kind of carries that melody into the string or yarn. And um, I'll go over the visuals and the kind of technicals of this instrument, and then you guys get to hear uh, a new friend of mine actually play this and it just, it, it kind of knocked me out of the park. Um, I'll also put a link in here to the video when it's done, I haven't finished editing yet, uh, of the actual performance of the yarn being pulled out. So that's forthcoming soon. Uh, but I'll walk through this. It has some unique woods in it that are not traditional um, and a lot of people said it would sound like trash, but I would beg to differ. And so would my newfound friend. Uh, so uh, let's walk up through this real quick. So the front of this is actually spruce. Um, and I'll tell you a story about that in a second. The sides are box elder. So have some lovely curl all the way through the neck. The neck and the ribs are box elder. The back is a wood called buckeye burl. So it is kind of not say uh, the tumor of a tree, but it has this kind of multiplicity of grain. It's not a straight grain in any way. Um, but that wood is primarily really light and uh, in terms of weight and density. It's like a sponge a little bit. Some burls are very dense. Buckeye burl is not. So I actually went through the process of stabilizing this material so that it's actually quite hard um, and dense. It doubled itself in weight uh, when I did the stabilization process. Uh, let's see, get that little spiral, a little curl up there uh, in the scroll. But Back to the front for a second, I also have, you'll see there's little brass eyelets that I turned or machined um, that actually hold the yarn coming through. And I can take these out. I haven't decided if I want to leave them in or not. I don't think they affect the sound too much. So I kind of like that they're there as a history uh, of the experience. But the top was a real struggle, I'll be honest. Um, I put it on and it's a spruce top traditionally made. And uh, I could not stand the color. It really clashed with the back. Um, which is a real focal point of this instrument. And so I decided to dye it gray. And as soon as I dyed it gray, I made a mistake and it looked awful. And I could not scrape enough of it off. It had soaked in so fast to that soft spruce. And, um, and I don't want to change the dimensions of this top because uh, I already had it dialed in really well. Uh, so I ended up doing a printmaking technique, um, almost like a, it's called a touche wash in lithography where you mix uh, a little bit of oil and water 
uh, with your pigment. And that's how I actually uh, dyed the top of this. And then it's uh, been shellacked in a traditional, not a varnish, um, but it's been French polished on the back uh, as well as the front. So that's the technicals of it. Um, so I don't think there's anything left really except to hear it. So let's hear my newfound friend playing this violin. <laughs> 